In Chambers v. NASCO, we explore whether a federal district court may use its inherent power to sanction a litigant's bad faith conduct. G. Russell Chambers was the sole shareholder and director of Calcasieu Television and Radio, which owned a television station. We'll collectively refer to Chambers and Calcasieu as Chambers. Chambers entered into a purchase agreement with NASCO Incorporated, pursuant to which he agreed to sell the station's facilities and broadcast license to NASCO. Chambers then changed his mind and refused to perform. On a Friday, NASCO notified Chambers that it would file suit in federal court the following Monday, seeking, among other things, a temporary restraining order. NASCO provided Chambers with notice, in accordance with the federal rules of civil procedure. Before NASCO filed suit, Chambers attempted to place the station's properties beyond the court's reach by transferring them to a trust. When this fact came to the district court's attention, it warned Chambers and his counsel that they'd acted unethically. Despite this and several subsequent warnings, Chambers continued to abuse the judicial process by, among other things, disobeying court orders and filing frivolous pleadings. The district court ultimately found for NASCO on the merits. Chambers appealed to the Fifth Circuit, which deemed his appeal baseless. The Fifth Circuit imposed appellate sanctions and remanded to the district court to set the sanctions amount. NASCO then moved for sanctions pursuant to Federal Rule of Civil Procedure 11, 28, U.S.C. Section 1927 and the court's inherent power. The district court found that Chambers had both acted in bad faith throughout the litigation and perpetrated a fraud on the court. Although the district court found that it could sanction Chambers pursuant to Rule 11 for filing frivolous pleadings, it declined to do so because the rule didn't reach the full extent of Chambers' misconduct. The district court also found that Section 1927 was insufficient because the statute permitted the imposition of sanctions only against counsel, not a party. Accordingly, the district court relied on its inherent power and ordered Chambers to pay all of NASCO's attorney's fees. The Fifth Circuit affirmed. The United States Supreme Court granted cert.